Boys, we finally got something fun to do around here. 12th gen D-Lid kits. Now, this video was not sponsored by Rock Cool in any way. Actually, this video was sponsored by the supporters. This damn thing cost me $100 to get here in Canada from uh, Rock and Cool. I don't know how, it's just apparently it's $100. Once again, couldn't have done it without you guys. Now, that being said, I do like Rock and Cool products. I've had no problems with them. Multiple D lid kits. Oh, I've got um, like their copper IHSs. I use them for 9th gen, 10th gen. Yeah, the, no problems. Actually, um, the way I learned about Fitz polish was because of them, because they give you one and one every um, they give you one in every single pack. Rocket cool. If you watch this video though, please offer your copper IHSs with a nickel plating option. The biggest hassle of mine is having to constantly sand and lap the inside and outside of the copper IHS every time I take it off the CPU with liquid metal, just because it stains on it, right? A nickel plating option would just be, just please. Anyway, now I do not have a copper IHS for the 12th gen CPU. I don't think they have one yet. But um, honestly, I don't even know if it'll be worth it for this one because the IHS on the 12th gen is so large already. And the die size is the same size as 10th gen. So you're just getting much more surface area here anyway. But if they ever do release a copper IHS, I'll, I'll buy one and give it a shot, right? So, what we're going to do today, we're going to try and delit a 12900K with this kit. We're going to do some before and after thermal benchmarks. We'll just use Cinebench. And then we'll actually see if there's any performance benefit to deleting 12th gen. There wasn't too much of a benefit with 10th gen because they reduced the die height so much. You still got like 5 Celsius, but it wasn't, um, you know, I wouldn't say it was worth voiding your warranty over. It might be the same thing for 12th gen, but we are on the 10 nanometer node, and the density of the heat is much denser, right? So we might actually get more of a benefit here again, like delitting might become a thing again with 12th gen. Um, 11th gen didn't exist. So let's open her up and see what we got inside. Um, Fitz Polish. Oh, Quicksilver. Yeah, okay. For those... Hmm, should I do a complete delitting guide at the same time? For those that don't know what Quicksilver is, this is not liquid metal. You use this stuff to dissolve the stock solder. I've done delitting videos in the past. Yeah, I'm not going to actually bother showing a step-by-step, -step, but, um... You can go back to my previous deleting videos, and then it, all the information is there. It's all the same, I'm assuming, right? Quicksilver, uh, some screws, some hex, some Allen keys. I'm not really sure what this is. I'm going to have to... Uh, oh, I think this is to put pressure back on if you want to glue it. So I'm going to have to go watch the instructions, actually, before I proceed, because... I don't want to roast a $700 CPU. Yeah, this is the little bracket they give you to put the IHS back on on center in case you do want to glue it. I don't personally glue my IHSs back on. I leave them off. But in case you did want to do it, it comes with that kind of stuff. What I'm really interested in is uh, this bad boy here. I want to I wanna do the actual delitting with this thing, right? So I, uh, I'm on their website right now, and uh, 12th gen D-Lit instructions. There's nothing here, boys. Where are the instructions? Uh-oh. Okay, well, I guess we're just going to wing it. So it's, it shouldn't be rocket science here, no instructions. I think you put this in here, right? And then you put this over top because, okay, so check this out, like, only the IHS is coming up, right? Now, this is going to push this way, right? So I want to, I'm going to assume I want to push away from these little SMD capacitors here. So I guess. So I, I think you clamp this down like this, put the three screws in and uh, push away. 
I just realized I got to go do some before testing before we crack this thing open. Uh, so let's go do that now. I'm going to go throw this in the test bench upstairs. Then we'll risk it all. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing, man. Okay, so we're going to be using this CPU here as our test subject. It's like an in-win 2800 RPM pump, 360 millimeter AO. But here is why this CPU is a perfect test subject. Now, when I hit run on Cinebench R20, you're going to see this core down here. Uh, right here. Core 7 is 16 degrees Celsius cooler than Core 6, right? So Cinebench is going, and just look at these core deltas between these cores. So I have a really, really, really bad either solder job or... The die isn't flat, right? So a D-lid should theoretically smoothen all of this out, right? So package is at 95, 94, right? All right. Okay, so I got it snugly in there. Uh, these little three screws are tightened down. And then now, it looks like this is it, boys. I'm kind of scared, not going to lie. All right, screw it. Let's just yeet this shit. <laughs> Let's just go for it. So far, it's smooth. Oh, man. I'm waiting for that pop. It's still actually really smooth. It's not giving me uh, any resistance here. Oh, there it is. There's the resistance. Oh, man. All right. Let's keep it. Keep it going. Oh, oh, no. Uh, insert suspenseful music. Oh my God, dude. Um, I might, I might, um, take it apart and push it. Oh, it cracked. Oh. Oh shit! I didn't even hear it. Oh shit! I don't know why I took that out. I'm, I'm nervous. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Now, if you encounter this situation where it won't come off. Do not pry it off, like up. Flip it over and do it from this side if possible. I actually can't really, can you? Okay, so we're gonna try this again, attempt number two. I don't wanna go too far. Like it's 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 sliding really easily right now, right? Um, I'm pretty much just trying to eyeball this right now. Okay. Less is, less is more when it comes to D-lids, all right? Like, yeah, okay. I'm going to take it apart again, and then I'm going to check where we are. No, okay, so look how far sideways it is, and it's still... The solder is still kind of on there. So, okay, I kind of got it. Um, You do not want to pry up again i cannot stress that enough i've broken dies like that before do not pry up you just want to try and get it sideways and get it off and out right i don't i might even have to do this off camera so i don't screw it up you also don't want to knock the capacitors i honestly don't know how i'm gonna get this off Maybe the old Oreo twist? Oh yeah. Oreo twist is working. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hang on. Back and forth, baby. Back and forth. It's just sticky. This is a this is a weird D lid, man. Oh, yeah. 
can't really oh shit oh take a look at that look look at how thin oh i have to focus this actually look at that so look at how thin the solder is i'm gonna go ahead and say that delitting is probably not gonna be worth it. Uh, check out the IHS as well. Actually, it um, it's kind of kind of blinding, but uh, yeah, the, the solder is super thin on the on the IHS as well here. Um, it's probably less. It's probably be about half a millimeter thick on this on the uh, die and the IHS here. So. Yeah, even even like the glue around the CPU is quite thin. This is all like, yeah, man, look how thick that IHS is, though. Holy crap. They were not kidding when they said they increased that. I'm actually just kind of stoked that this all worked out. So even like without instructions, it was easy enough to kind of figure out. I'm just going to quickly jump in here and say, do not use my video here as an instruction manual for this DLID. Wait for them to release a proper instruction manual. I I yeet all my shit, so I'm not the I'm not the best role model or person to follow when it comes to doing things properly. Okay, I'm super ghetto, and I yeah, just PSA warning. In fact, I don't recommend this to novices at all. This one is a very very difficult deal. It wow, there is actually so little solder on this thing that you don't really even have to apply too much pressure to this thing. It's just coming right off. Yeah, Intel was not lying when they said that there's like, like it's a very, very thin solder height on this thing. Okay, so this was actually much more involved than I thought. So if you guys do want me to make a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually delid this thing from start to finish, um, leave a comment down below and let me know, and I'd be happy to do that for you. I have like three more of these things to delid. Um, it's not as straightforward as you think it would be. There's like even just like cutting the plastics around the capacitors to not hit them off and shit. Like there, there's a lot more to this one. So if you guys do want that, great. If not, Let's go run the benchmarks. All right. Let's goop a little bit of liquid metal on here. Yeah. Goop a little liquid metal on here. Yeah. And you swirl it all about. That's what it's all about. Okay, let's turn it back on. See if it was successful. That's a good sign, I think. Oh. Oh yeah, the white light, baby. Yeah, uh, huh? Uh. We going or? Oh, yeah. All right, moment of truth time. Let's run Cinebench. Let's go. Come on. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh. Huh. Huh. But, huh. So we're at 81, 83 Celsius on the package. The delta was reduced to 10 Celsius between the cores. But yeah, this chip is just screwed. Okay, let's run this one more time, actually. So what were we at before? We were at uh, 93 before? 94 so we got a about a 10 celsius drop on the package uh the hottest core before was about 95 as well 
So we got about a 12 Celsius drop on the hottest core. Yeah, so about, about 10 Celsius. Right, pulling 200 watts. That's, uh, that's unreal. Look at that. It totally worked. Yeah, it's interesting how that CPU actually has a 10 Celsius uh, delta between cores there. That CPU actually would have been a good candidate for just an RMA. It's weird that the D-Lid only improved it by 4 Celsius on the deltas, I mean. Um, overall, though, that 10 Celsius drop, that was much better than I was expecting. Now, we don't have time for it in this video, but in a future video, we will see how far we can push that CPU now in terms of uh, clock speed. 10 Celsius drop should give us a good 100 megahertz. So if you're at like 5.2, you should be able to get 5.3 now just from that D-Lid. That's how it used to be anyway. Now, I wonder if there is anything I can do about that core delta. Maybe I'll lap the die. We'll save that for another video. I'm, I'm going to brainstorm that one. So 10 Celsius drop. And uh, that was with an AIO and regular thermal paste. Probably could have dropped even more if it was on a custom loop and liquid metal on top of the IHS as well, right? So great results for just a standard AIO setup. Anyway, rocket cool. Good job. Good product. It, <laughs> I figured it out even without instructions. If I can figure it out, a lot of people can probably figure it out. But uh, get those instructions updated. Legendary supporters, if you want me to delid or send you some delidded 1200Ks, hit me up in the DMs. We'll work something out. Anyway, guys, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, comment down below if you do want me to do um, a step-by-step -step guide on how to, like a really in-depth step-by-step guide on how to delid these things. I can do that for you guys, no problem. If you, if if, if um if there's enough interest for it. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, talk to you later.